Good morning, Mission Control. It is Friday. Got the day off today from work, and gonna come out here and hopefully get the old cooler, uh, the cube, uh, all built. Uh, you'll notice I did a little fit check here while we're off camera. The air conditioning unit fits perfectly as designed. Uh, if you've been following along uh, for a while, you know that I'm not the world's greatest measurer. Uh, I measure like five times and cut three times. Um, if you don't know that saying, you're supposed to measure twice, cut once. Uh, and uh, so I'm happy, really happy. I, I like triple, quadruple checked the measurements of the air conditioner, which I didn't have. Uh, I had to go on their website, look at their technical uh, specs and their dimensions, pulled those and designed the cube to fit it. And sure enough, it fits it perfectly. It was almost like it was designed to fit into this because it fits so nice. So I'm really, really quite happy uh, with that. So that pretty much gets us out of the woods as far as stuff that goes into the cube and then fitting. Uh, we got the doors on in the last video, got that all taken care of. Uh, so what we need to do today, we need to uh, take the air conditioner out. It's just sitting in here right now. And we're actually gonna load the cube up into the uh, expedition, into the delivery vehicle, and we're gonna do a fit check before we get really crazy putting any, everything together. Uh, we're gonna do that to make sure uh, that it all fits correctly and those measurements are tough ones. So hopefully we got that right. The area of biggest concern is actually right here. Not here, just on this bar right here. The reason for that is in the Expedition there's a DVD player and it's just, it just came with it. I didn't want it, it's just there um, for the back seat. And it comes down a few inches. I tried to stay below it in my measurements, but there's a chance we could have interference right here. If that's the case, we're going to have to bend this bar uh, or shave it uh, to, to get it all to fit right. So we're going to do this fit check now and that could lead us down a whole horrible path of decisions that have to be made. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, but I, I'm very hopeful. I think everything is going to work out pretty good here. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping to get the fit check done and then we'll actually start putting in the framing here. We're going to use half inch plywood uh, and then foam board on the inside of it. And even as I think about it, like the amount of time the greens are going to spend in here with this air conditioning unit and the volume of air, uh, it may not even be worth insulating it uh, just because it's going to be such a short duration. You know, we're looking like an hour or two, two hours max really, uh, that they'd be in here. And this thing would be running uh, while they are in here, keeping it, you know, right above freezing 40, 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that like, uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, 10, so it'd be like 5 Celsius, somewhere right in there. Um, so, we'll see. Let's get started. Enough talkie talkie, let's walkie walkie. What we've been using for the last few months uh, for delivery, just a large igloo uh, bought at Costco cooler. It's been doing the job uh, until recently when we've got more customers and we just can't fit everything in there. So, we've had to go to a second smaller cooler uh, here. It's just the nature of the fact that we're starting to be successful that we really need to have this in here. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, uh, you may not know what the story is here with the expedition. So let's just go over that real fast. Is uh, We live in a place where we have to have a four-wheel drive vehicle, number one. Number two, for the snow. Uh, number two, uh, we needed something large enough to carry what we needed, but number three, it had to be under basically $5,000. Um, we were able to get this rig for $4,500. It's got 170,000 miles on it. It's in good mechanical shape. It's got some dings, dings, and bents and bumps here and there, but it's uh, plenty good for what we need. Uh, Four-wheel drive, or two-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, uh, all three options. And so we didn't want to uh, commit what what would have been like $30,000 for a delivery vehicle that has a cooler, it has four wheel drive, like a van, which is what we really need. Um, like a sprinter van with a uh, uh, cooler in it. But to get a, a sprinter van that has four wheel drive in it, uh, that has the cooler and everything, it was well over $30,000 for the ones I could find. Uh, for the two wheel versions, it's like $16,000. So it just, just wasn't an option. So we went with this rig, and now we're designing this temporary cooler, which will last us quite a while, uh, probably at least the next year or two anyway, unless things really, really get going, um, which would be a great problem to have. I'd be 
happy to retire the cooler and go get a nice van and all that if we had the customers. But uh, I'm expecting a slow growth, so we'll see. But it was designed to carry everything that we need to carry right now. And what we're going to do, i got to climb in here and get this. We have these collapsible uh, pulling devices. Ow! That's a finger. That collapse down real small for storage, but get nice and big uh, for actual usage. There we go. And they lock, which was a requirement I had. Uh, so we'll put the microgreens in their packaging, in their containers, as well as the bags. We'll put them in here. And then close it all up, move from the building into the cooler, put this into the cooler. Oops, there we go. Come on. And you can lock it. Boom. And boom. That way, uh, the lock is important because when you're doing delivery, you're carrying this, right? Or you're putting it on a dolly if you've got a bunch of them. And if they fall over, we don't want greens to come out of a food safe container and hit the ground. Uh, even though they're in bags, we don't want that to happen. So they got to be lockable. So these are nice. Um, and fully reusable and easy to clean. Also, all certification requirements. Well, reusable is not a certification requirement, but easy to clean is. So this is what is going to go inside the cube. I think you can get, what is it? You can get uh, four, eight, ten of these, ten of these into the cube uh, at one time. So, that's that. Let's get these out of there. Boom. Now part of the thing for the cube right now is just the aluminum frame so it's easy to move. Um, but I already know, once I put the plywood and I secure it with foam and everything, and you put the air conditioner in with it, the battery and the lights and everything, it's going to be pretty heavy. Uh, so I'm going to end up probably putting some eye hooks on the side or something to where I can pull into the barn, which is where we're at, and probably have a pulley system up in the rafter, and I can hook on um, some rope or some cable to this thing and pull it out and hold it with the pulley system and then set it down on some stilts uh, for storage when we're not using it. That's the game plan. We'll see how that really works. But right now, we're going to go for a fit. Fit check. Well, width looks good. Get you a better angle. Oh, right. right there. That's a good angle. Okay. Oh, it's tight. Oh, it's really tight right there. That's not good. A little too tight. My requirement for this is that it could be installed in, in an hour and uninstalled in an hour. So if I do have to take some paneling off, that's okay, but my measurement appears to be off by about a quarter of an inch. It's about a centimeter. Oi, oi, oi. That makes for a longer day. It'll go in, but it's going to be really tight if I do that. Really tough. I just figure out how to get the seatbelt stuff off. Might be back in business here. Mm. 
All right, so my game plan is I'm gonna take off the paneling. I gotta get the seat belts out of the way first, uh, and then I can put them back up. Probably put the paneling back up once it's all installed, but we're gonna find out. <clears throat> all right, I just got the uh, trim removed from the back here. See how we do. Good sign. That's not a good sign. So the second set of trim up front, let me show you. We'll go mobile here. Go mobile. So you can see, see how close it is. It's just tight. That's all. I mean, I was so close to getting it. Oh, it might come by. Oh, it just might be angle. Okay. Well, that's why we do this stuff. Sure enough. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> it is tight right there. Okay. Now well, I think we do have our interference up front. Yep. I'll get some light on that. There we go. So, definitely off on that. Obviously, way off. Oh well. We'll fix it. We'll figure it out. So, what we do, figure stuff out. It's going to be tough though. Alright, so, obviously, there's an interference there. I'm going to go off camera here and put the old noodle to work and see what we can do uh, to work around it. Resistance is futile. All right, so I removed just four bolts, four little screws actually, and I removed the DVD player, which we won't need when we're delivering. You can't watch it anyway when you're driving, which makes total sense, but at the same time, leaves you wishing you had something that worked. Like, yeah, it's not working. I can't use it when I want to. And I shouldn't use it when I drive, but I, anyway, moving on. Okay. We're up. And it looks like I need to move the passenger seat forward because I have just this little bit right here, or I might actually just decide to trim it. It fits, fits perfectly down there, a little bit out there. I have plenty of room with the driver's seat there. I just need to move the passenger seat forward. I think I'm gonna do that. All right, well, we just got it all loaded in, just taking out the DVD player and then um, the bottom of the cube caught on some of the carpet on the lower seats up front. So once we got that all taken care of, it came in here real nice. So we've got our door, open that up. I found out if I, <laughs> when I drew the pictures, I actually had all the boxes this way, uh, but I gave enough space for air so I could actually turn, put one set this way, one set this way, and that almost doubles the amount of storage in here. So really happy with that. Let me show you up front. Kind of get the whole idea here how it's all going to look and then here's the side door so you can actually come up here open that up and you can get your deliveries here as well you can stack those too hot all right so <clears throat> kind of what we had to do we had to remove the trim from the side uh the very back here which is not that big a deal I need to reconnect the seat belt because the seat belts are actually part of the retention plan for this. We're actually going to be using the seat belts. I have uh, seat belt clip clips that I'll be mounting to this 
uh, so that if there is an accident, those seat belts will grab and help prevent it from shifting. It, it will still shift because there's no way you can stop that impulsive force, that immediate force. Um, but we have the diamond plate that's going to go up front uh, in, in behind the driver. So there's going to be a wall there. And then that diamond plate hits both of the seats. So we have the two seat belts that will be retaining it as well as that diamond plate hitting the back of the seats to stop it from shifting full forward. Um, it's also the reason why I chose to put the air conditioner on the passenger side is so that if there is an accident that he the heaviest item is the air conditioner, it's over on the passenger side, it's not right behind the driver for safety. So if you did have a big problem, the, the, the most likely thing that would hurt someone is that air conditioner somehow, I don't know how it would do it, but it, that, that's the risk is it could break free and, and shoot forward. So that's why I put it over on the passenger side, but then we have the diamond plate and we have the passenger seat all right there to stop it from actually becoming a projectile. So, uh, and I think all that is something, the probability of that happening is pretty darn close to zero. It's certainly below 50%, way, way below 50%. I'd be shocked if it was above a 10% probability, but we planned for it. Um, so now what I need to do is take this out of here and uh, I need to start working on the paneling that goes on the inside, to actually start making it so it can hold something and not just be a really cool looking uh, uh, Lego project. Alright, so I just got the first one, uh, first coat on it. I'm guessing that it's going to take quite a while for it to dry. That's why I got the heater in here as well. Uh, we'll see, and it's also going to soak up since the wood will soak up quite a bit, so it'll probably be a second coat. But I put it on pretty thick, so we'll see. Uh, I'm going to move on to these other ones. I'm going to go off camera here while I get that done. Uh, next time I see you, it should have everything all painted up. I think I actually don't need to paint this one because it goes on the bottom of the, uh, of the core, but we'll find out. Alright, we just got done. I decided to just paint them all on here. Uh, the first one's getting close to being dry and ready for its second coat. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here while these dry and I start to move on to the next thing. Uh, we got, what we do? We confirmed that it would fit, had to remove the DVD player and two pieces of trim. I consider that to be successful. That's pretty darn good. Off by one centimeter, that's pretty darn good. Um, on a custom build. So, we got to get this paint dry. That's the next thing. We got the uh, cube out of the, the rig and we got to get these things all dried up so we can cut them, put them, these are the walls that'll go in and we're going to end up probably using uh, liquid nails 
uh, to secure this all in place. And yeah, we're gonna start doing electrical and everything else on the rig, but this is pretty good, pretty good step here. Really happy with it. It's gonna look good, I think. It's gonna look really nice. It's gonna get a lot heavier, but uh, I knew that was gonna happen. That's unavoidable. So, hope you enjoyed following along. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Uh, and you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter if you like. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian, out.